Good morning, everybody. It is uh, morning in Colorado anyway. It is 10.30 in the morning and I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado. Welcome to my studio. Super happy that you're all here. Thanks for showing up. A week after the last Change the Shed, I figured it would be better to um, have two of them this month and I will be um, taking a little bit of a break next week for the holidays. Um, I will be back in January, probably the first week in January. So I will see you again then from my studio. Um, let's see what y'all are saying. Um, thanks for tuning in from all over the world. Um, New York, Red Island, Texas, Healdsburg. Hi, Victoria. Um, Deb says she's in very windy Cheyenne. I am just down the road from Cheyenne. I think we're like 45 miles from Cheyenne, Wyoming. And um, it is super windy, so um, there's supposed to be um, super high winds today, like gusts over 50 or 60 miles per hour. So hopefully that won't happen while we're on. And Fort Collins has buried power lines, so hopefully we won't lose our power. Last week I did have a thing where my computer shut itself down, so if something happens and I poof, disappear, um, Unless our power is out or something, I will be back again. Just hang on. It might not be you. Um, Christine from Ottawa and Nan, who just ordered the array color cards. Yay, Nan! I think Sarah from Just Yarn did tell me that they were going live today. So um, I can't wait to see them. They're supposed to be beautiful. I'm using array yarn here. It's this um, really beautiful new tapestry yarn from Just Yarn. G I S T, and um, they're making they make the most beautiful color cards for all their yarns, the ones that they produce themselves, and they're they've made them for array. So um, I don't think they have very I don't know how many they have. So if you want a set of color cards, uh, definitely jump on that. Um, they went for sale today. I'm pretty sure. Um, hello, Carolyn from the north of England, and Mary from Idaho. And Jocelyn also ordered the color cards. Yay. Um, I'm looking forward to getting my set. They have saved me a set of them. So um, I will show them to you when they get here. That will be fun. Um, I should have them by January. Uh, yeah, Marlena, I said um, I will be back in January for Change the Shed. So, and there's always, unless I forget, I always post on the um, website page. If you look under online learning, there's a page that says Change the Shed. Actually, now there's multiple pages. I have broken them up. We've done so many episodes of this. I don't actually know how many, but it's like 70 some. Um, I've broken them up by dates so you can find the episodes you want to go back and watch. Anyway, I'll be back in January. I think it's January 5, whatever the first Wednesday is in January is probably the date and I will put it on that website. Um, oh my gosh, Barbara, you got snow in Bainbridge. Wow. Um, I wish we would get snow here. It is, uh, we have had basically zero snow. Zero. Uh, and it's windy and raining. And uh, there's a fire warning, fire warning um, today. So, yay. Uh, anyway, I am working on, let me show you what I'm working on. Um, still working on the uh, wildflower tapestry, of course. And today I'm going to, here, let me show you. I'll just flip over to this camera a second. This is the whole piece. So it is, um, right there is the edge, 40 inches, and I'm weaving it sideways. This will be the top, so it will be flipped around this way, and it's about 24 inches wide. Um, I think since last time I was here, I have put in this mustard color, which I actually really like. Um, it's called Marigold. This is all array yarn, and so um, I really enjoyed this color a lot. Today I'm going to put in a color called Eggplant, which um, is another one of my favorite just colors, um, array colors. That and the next one after that will be indigo, which is also a really beautiful, beautiful color. So let me just tell you what I was um, musing about yesterday. I'm going to go to this closer camera. Um, 
I was originally, so here are the four colors of eggplant. And if you've been following this tapestry, you know that this is the first time I've actually used yarns that um, I did not dye myself. For every other large tapestry I've done, I'm pretty sure every single one I have, with the exception of when I did Rio Grande tapestry um, at Northern New Mexico College a long time ago, that was um, commercially dyed yarn. Everything I've done since then in the last like 15 years has been with yarn I've dyed myself. So it's a bit of a departure to go to yarn that someone else dyed, which means they get to choose the colors. But here I am, and it means that I got to start weaving really quickly, so that is a bonus. Um, and I get to use this array yarn, which is really pretty. So here's what I was going to do. In my plan for this next band of color, I was going to use these two colors. And if you know me, I was winding the butterflies yesterday for this new color, and I looked at that and I thought, mm, can't do it. You know why? If you know me, you know I like gradation, and I'm looking at smooth gradations. So there's actually two colors in each of these bands that are graded together. Let, this is darker and this is lighter. Um, can you see this? Same thing down here. This is lighter at the edge and darker on the right. So when I looked at this, I thought, oh no, I can't do that. Because look at how big a gap there is there. If I were dyeing these yarns, I absolutely would have dyed another color in the middle. I just didn't want the super spotted effect. It might be great and I might be missing an opportunity by not doing that. But So I had to decide with this particular color, am I going to go with the two lighter ones or the two darker ones? Um, because the two in the middle that I was originally going to use are going to create spots when I mix them together. Which is not what I wanted for this tapestry, maybe for a different tapestry. Then I thought, well, what am I using for the next color? And I'm, the next one after that is this indigo color. And the band that comes after this purple one is right in the middle of the piece, close to the middle of the piece. And I wanted it to be fairly dark. And the one that follows this is also fairly dark. So I didn't want to go dark, dark, dark. I wanted it to have some value change. So because of this, I decided to go with the lighter colors. All of that might not be interesting, but that was my decision process yesterday. So I'm going to use these two colors, and I actually did wind the mix. So this is this color, five, uh, four of them. And this is this color, four of them. And this is the blends in between. So three of the light, one of the dark, all the way through gradation. And that is what we're doing today. Um, I hope that makes some sense. Hello, Lori from Philly and Susan from Pittsburgh and Patty from New Mexico. I grew up in New Mexico, so I have a fondness for all things New Mexico. Hope to get back there soon. Uh, okay, so what we need to do now is, um, I'm going to turn the brightness up on my, excuse my head, computer so I don't keep thinking that y'all can't see what I'm doing. Um, I have Here's the edge of the next shape and here is the other side and I'm ready to put in my eccentric outline all the way across. It changes colors here obviously and I want actually on this one I'm going to do the outline I think for the whole way across. So first I need um, oh when you get your computer a little too close to your shafts on your loom, it causes trouble. Um, okay. I also spent a bunch of time this week fussing with the shafts on this loom. Um, this is a Harrisville rug loom, which is a counter march loom. And if you've ever used a counter march loom, you know that the shafts are tied up doubly, so every single shed pulls both up and down which is fantastic for tapestry. It means the shed is always even, but it also means that if you're, um, the lengths of the cords that tie the lambs and the, sh the, um, the lambs are bars that you hook the treadles and the shafts to. Um, if those cords aren't the right length, your shed is all wonky. And I had a lot of shed issues this week. I had just been going with it for, a while and I was like I finally I just have to fix this 
So I climbed under my loom about 50 times and the shed is better, much better. So we'll see if that is helpful. I was having a little bit of trouble with ridging in the tapestry and I think it was from um, some of the shafts were riding higher than the other ones and it was causing that, you know, the weft goes over a higher warp and it pops up a little bit and if that happens over and over you get a ridge where that warp is higher. Okay. Hello, Ghislaine from Abusan, France, and Eva from Spain. Europe is in the house. Welcome, everybody. Good evening to those of you in Europe. Okay, I'm going to put in the um, first outline with the white. I made sure, the first thing I did just before I got on the air was make sure all of this was in the same shed. So I went through and looked. Um, you know, this is all open. That's open, this is open, and this is open. I wanted it all to be in the same shed. So I can put that outline in. If it, there was a couple portions that weren't in the right shed and I just put in, like you can see right here, I put in a little piece of yarn to shift the shed to the other, the other one. really want to make sure this covers because I don't know if you can see this in the camera but those it's darker here because that's um, where I marked on the warp so I want to make sure my coverage is really good to cover that up got a weird step right there because I have a hill thread but on the other side that will be a valley thread so it shouldn't look so wild um, I do have a mirror sometimes I check underneath Okay, so the next color here is going to be an outline. And I need to do two. Ah! I need to do two. I'm using two colors here um, a mix of this um, sort of olive brown and a brown. And I need to do two picks or one sequence to make a solid line, otherwise it will be dotted. So I'm just measuring to make sure I get enough yarn here. So this, because I'm doing an eccentric outline, is in the same shed as that white was. Doing a split weft eccentric outline. This is something that I go over in the warp and weft class. Um, okay, so I've got this much of it in, and so I need to go and put back to the other shed. It probably would have been less confusing if I'd done this all at once. Nope, hold on. That's open, okay. We are dog sitting, a little dog who has black hair. This is not the best timing to be doing a white tapestry. I used to have a dog with white hair. So every time I wore black, there would be dog hair all over it. Okay, so there is the yellow in the same shed I need this to go into. So I can put that in. I need the white to go in. Just using, this is a great way to use up tails. I mean, if you have a tail here, you might as well use it to do an outline. Okay, so there's that one, and let me just put this yellow in. And let the dark color of this mix, I think. We still need this white, which I made these tails long enough when I put them in. 
make sure that reaches. Okay, now I can put the rest of my outline in, except I'm noticing right here that I have a pretty good slit that I would like to sew up before. You can sew slits off the loom or when you've woven more on top of it, but I find it much easier to do it when the slit is still open. This piece is going to hang sideways from the selvage and sew slits. Well, I might not sew this slit maybe in a piece that was hung from the warp. I am hanging it from the selvage, so I want the slit to be um, stable because the otherwise the um, slits can gape open if it's hung that way. Gravity. Gravity can have an effect on your work there. Okay. Then I just leave the sewing thread and I'll um, finish that off later. Oh yeah, Leslie, that's a great question. Leslie was asking um, if I'd considered cutbacks in this piece. I did. Uh, when I did the, um, actually, I'll even show you, Leslie. When I did the um, sample, remember this part? I was experimenting with whether I was gonna do cutbacks, whether they were in white or not. Um, I suppose you don't really call it cutbacks if you mix another color in, but I was experimenting with adding one strand of silk to this and also what angle I liked and uh, ultimately for whatever reason decided not to do cutbacks, but I did think about it. Um, yeah, Leslie said she was watching the um, Jilly Edwards video, which is in Design Solutions 2, the second season of Design Solutions recently and um, Jilly uses cutbacks all the time uh, in actually pretty cool ways. Her pieces are actually, I would say, a lot about the cutbacks. So if you haven't seen Jilly Edwards' work, I definitely recommend looking her up. It's Jilly is like Jill, G-J-I-L-L-Y Edwards. And she is on Instagram. She does not have a website anymore, which is uh, hurts my heart, <laughs> but um, if you go on her Instagram page, you'll see a lot of her work. I think it's Jilly underscore Edwards or underscore Jilly Edwards. If you just put in, if you just search, you'll find her. Um, okay. Anyway, great question, Leslie. Um, oh man, Nancy, you're making nutmeg cookies. That sounds really good. You're making me hungry. Um, Oh, Marlena, I was trying to figure out what you were saying. Marlena asked, have you decided yet what you'll do at the ends where you join the yarns? Um, which um, I think you mean, do you mean the splices? I haven't decided yet. I'm afraid to cut them off, so. <laughs> um, if that's what you mean, I don't know. If you were um, wondering about something else, let me know. Okay, so here's the second pick of the eccentric outline, or eccentric, if you've been taking classes from me for a while. I used to be an occupational therapist, and when we were in school, they were, when learning muscle contraction, we would talk about, e they would always say eccentric um, to help us learn, and it just stuck in my brain. Probably never say the word eccentric right. Unless I'm talking about an eccentric person, and then maybe. I'm being really careful when I put this in because you really want to make sure there's enough. I'm actually pulling with this hand. I'm adjusting the tension with this hand as I'm beating it in, and I'm watching the bubble going over. I'm not this careful with stuff that's perpendicular, but it does make a difference with outlines. It's really easy to get the weft too tight, in which case you'll 
get lice or um, I guess lice would be the main thing. You'll see the warp. There might be a little gap there. It could contribute to dry in if your um, part where you're weaving eccentrically is um, quite wide. You could definitely get dry in also. Um, anytime you're weaving anything that's not perpendicular to the warp, you have to put more weft in. Um, ah. Eva, good evening. It is definitely evening there. It looks like it is 6.42, almost 7 p.m. Um, Barbara says she had um, a sweater whose fiber contact said 10% fur blend, and now she thinks about pet hair on her clothes. So true, Barbara. It's really funny. Um, we try to keep the pet hair down, but it's getting... We've had this dog now for like four months, and it, it just sort of accumulates in places where... You think you've gotten rid of it, but she just keeps shedding. Um, yeah, that would be fun, Barbara. A small course on cutbacks. That would be great. I'll put it on my list. Um, there's so many cool ways to use it, and there's so many people who use them, which are great examples. Um, that would be really fun. Okay, we're ready. No, we're not ready. Now we need the second half of the um, line. So I have... Um, put in, I've basically done a split weft outline between the white and the outline, and now I need the out between the outline and the eggplant color. We're going to this one. So I'm going to split that between the two colors. And I shouldn't need a full pick of this. I should only need shouldn't need two picks of this. So in the same shed, I'm going to go about this far. I bet you guys can't hear that wind. It's pretty crazy out there. Deb can hear it because she's in Cheyenne. <laughs> Where it is even windier, I'm sure, than it is here. Wyoming is crazy for wind. up in New Mexico so I'm used to wind. It was super windy upbringing. I had sand in my teeth a lot. Um, okay. I think that is going to be good. Now we can change to the other shed and add our... If I didn't add that last pick of the violet or the um, eggplant color, it would... Um, not be as crisp, the line between the new color and the old color. Oh my gosh, Carol is here from Australia. Welcome. I, you get big kudos from me, Carol. I'm so sorry you couldn't sleep. It must be, I don't know, super early in the morning for you. So welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I think, um, you know, Australia is like 14 hours ahead of where I am, and so... It's always the middle of the night for you all. Okay, let's set these in. Uh, Mary wants to know if there will be a Design Solutions 3. I am, there will not be one in January, Mary. I'm not going to do Design Solutions 3 in the way I did the first two. Um, just because there's, it's too much content for me. I just don't have the... <laughs> I don't have the ability to do that for another year. It was um, six months of incredibly hard work, and, and I have to do a few other things um, in 2022. So there won't be um, like a six-month comprehensive big class like there was last year, but there will be some kind of smaller class around design and um, learning to critique your own work. Um, and potentially a few other things. I don't know when that will be. I was actually debating that in my head this morning. So I will decide fairly soon and let you know so you can plan. 
but it will be a shorter thing, like one or two months, not six months. Okay, I don't usually do it like this. When I'm talking, I <laughs> have a harder time not making mistakes. Just changing the way I was doing that splice. Okay, so five colors in gradation. There aren't that many yarns, commercial yarns, that you can buy in gradation. So I'm really thankful that um, Sarah Resnick at Just Yarn, who runs an amazing business anyway, I'm really grateful to her for making this yarn because um, there just isn't one made in the USA that comes in gradation, which by which I mean, you know, one hue, this is all one hue, but it comes in four shades. And um, that's a really nice thing for tapestry. The other yarns that um, I like that come that way are yarns like uh, Appleton Cruel. I don't like Appleton Tapestry, I will just say that again. It's too bouncy, it's made for, it's called tapestry, but it's made for embroidery. But I really like Appleton Cruel. It's thin, you bundle it, it comes in 400 some colors. It's really um, a very nice yarn. And Weaver's Bazaar has great gradations. Beautiful yarn, one of my favorites. Um, Pattern a and used to be one, but they went bankrupt. And um, there is a business called Colonial Needlework, Colonial Needle that is making that yarn again. I don't think they have the 400 colors that Pattern Ann had, but you can find Pattern Ann on eBay and sometimes for outrageously amazing prices. So, And then Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn is the other yarn that comes in gradation. So if you're in Australia and you haven't tried that yarn, for goodness sake, try some of it. It's really beautiful. Okay, I think, I think we are ready to actually weave this shape now. Um, after half an hour. Um, oh, Nan. Yeah, so you guys maybe can hear. The, welcome, Laura. I'm glad you got a little bit of time to watch at lunch. Um, yeah. Oh, Marla says she's in Kansas up to 65 miles per hour. It's probably part of the same storm, Marla. We're right. I mean, I'm in on the edge of eastern Colorado so we get a lot of the same stuff you get in Kansas. If I drove east for an hour and a half or so I would be in Kansas. Um, oh the bones. I'll, sh I'll um, talk about that in a second Nancy. That's a great idea. Um, yeah just we'll be adding more colors so this is what this is the first color that i have um audrey's asking about that gap i was talking about between um, these two colors and uh just is adding a lot of colors so i will talk to sarah about um gaps like that i haven't actually woven those two together and so in i mean just my experience looking at that if i had dyed it i would have gone back to the dye pot and changed um, and dyed one in the middle. Um, but I haven't tried it, but I will um, talk to Sarah about some of those and they're definitely adding colors and they are happy to take suggestions from clients. So if there's a color that you just really want and you don't see it in their lineup, they might be working on it or you should ask. Um, Audrey asked about these bones, which in general, I have, don't, I have not used them much in the past because um, butterflies work really well with the yarn I usually use, but butterflies do not work so well with this thin, more slippery bundled yarn. They work better with this yarn than like Weaver's Bazaar, which is even more slippery, but um, okay. The bones are great, is what I was getting to, Audrey. Um, 
my teacher, James Kohler, used them all the time. Actually, this one I recognized as one of his. I came away with a few of his after he died in 2011, and um, this is one of them. So probably James Kohler wove with this particular bobbin. The rest of them are a mix. I think all of these ones I have here I got in um, France when I visited, but I have a lot of them that um, Melissa Ellison Dewey made, actually. The woman who makes the skinny tapestry bobbins I love made a bunch of um, Abusan bones also, which look like this. So they're a little different. Um, they have knobbier ends. Here's one of the French ones. They come in all kinds of shapes and it doesn't really matter as long as they hold the yarn well and don't catch on the warp. Okay, so I went here for the lowest point in this design, which was here. And I will fill that in. And then as I get up higher, I will start hatching with these other bobbins. I missed a warp there. So I just, because I'm controlling the shed with my foot. I just um, lifted my foot up a little bit, closed the shed, and then just took some pressure off as I pulled that warp up and then right back again. I really love controlling. I just think looms that you can control the shed with your feet are a miracle. And I think a lot of new tapestry weavers are afraid of floor looms, but you don't need to be afraid of floor looms. Yes, there is a learning process in how to warp it, but there are some great books out there and videos and I actually have a video in my Warp and Weft class about how to warp a floor loom. And, uh, or upright, you know, upright tapestry looms that have treadles are also great. Thanks, Lori. Glad you like the eggplant. She said the addition of the eggplant makes her smile. It does um, suddenly feel more like Easter or something. I don't know why. Spring. Feels more like spring. The wind outside makes me feel like it's spring. We just skipped winter. Haven't had any snow. So from here, it's pretty simple weaving until I get to the other side of this shape. That is something I enjoy a lot, <laughs> simple weaving. This is, I think, one of the advantages of weaving large is that often your forms are larger it's not that the piece is less complicated necessarily, it's just that everything is bigger. So the weaving is sometimes really easy because you have more space. Definitely not trying to convince you all to go out and get floor looms, but if you find that you're afraid of a floor loom, you can think twice about it. Also, they're not as expensive as you think they are. You can get a really good used um, floor loom for, well, they're not cheap, but if you had an extra thousand dollars, you could probably come up with something really great. Definitely not a, not a spend to be made lightly. So here, just watching. You can't see exactly what I can see. Um, all right, I'm gonna, let's give you a little bit closer. Look, okay. 
um, as I'm beading and I get a real good shadow when I do that um, as I'm beading when I did that before I didn't see enough I'm almost looking at um, and if I had a photo taken at an angle looking at how the weft goes over each of the warps as I'm working and um, if I'm not happy with how much bubble I see there, I adjust it a little bit. Try not to get too picky about it because then the weaving takes forever, but. Um, and then I want, oops, right there. Float, can you see that warp? Um, I floated under right here. I just grabbed a warp I shouldn't have. Just filling in this uh, low spot a little bit. Let's go back here. And I'm just gonna check. I know my beater. So this is how far that beater would. Um, so that's where my fell line is on the sides, on each side. Um, you can see the beater did that. Here's a, um, so the fell line is up here and I still have a dip down there. Um, but I like to pull the beater forward now and then and just check where the warps are in the center. My warps are dead center in the reed. And on the edges, they're just hugging the edge of the um, dent. And so that tells me that I'm a little bit erring on the side of not enough weft. And I actually think that that has to do with the different materials. I'm not used to this yarn at a large, for a large tapestry. And it doesn't have quite the bounce that the hair spill yarn I usually use. Hair spill Kohler Singles um, has. The Faroo is very similar. This white is very similar to the hair spill. But the array is quite different. And it's just a learning process how it's going to act in a larger tapestry. Okay. Okay, so that's where I wanted for that because I want to bring... This one, nope, in to meet it. Okay. I do like these bones, Mary, or I can't remember exactly who asked about the bones, but. Um, they're easy to grab and they hold this yarn pretty well. And then you ha always get these moments where I'm like, oh, that's a little, can you see that little flip there? Do I spend the three seconds or five seconds to go back and fix that? Maybe. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I wrote a blog post recently about this yarn and the, what about those bumps in the surface of your tapestry? Can't remember the title, but it was within the last two months. Should you care about the surface texture? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So I'm just hatching back and forth as I go up. Enjoying the weaving. I'm sure hopefully by the next time I'm back I will have this purple done and maybe even the next blue one. Um, Hathaway Milano Cruel. I haven't heard of that, Nancy. She asked if I've heard of Heathway Milano Cruel. It might be, is it a European wool? Um, yeah, and she's saying that the Appleton has thin spots and I don't, are you talking about the Cruel yarn? Um, I think it's Appleton Krill is so thin that when you bundle it, 
I'm not sure it would matter, but um, anyway, I have not ex used Appleton extensively. I know there are a lot of tapestry weavers who have used it and like it, but I personally have only woven small samples with it to just try the yarn. So, um, so I don't know that yarn. Um, Nancy, there are lots of yarns out there that you can use for tapestry. And I wrote a blog post that if you don't understand why certain yarns are good for tapestry, you should read that blog post um, because it's important to understand why some things are great for tapestry and some things are not. Um, if you're in my classes, I link them all there. Otherwise, look on, on my blog under yarns and there's um, why sh it's something about why should I use this what makes a good tapestry yarn or something. Um, Marlena, can you just shift the color gradation in a random pattern to make sure it doesn't create a definite line? Um, yeah, you can do a lot of things, Marlena, but the problem with these two is that they're just so far apart in value that no matter what I do, if I blend them in the bundle, I mean, you'll even be able to see it if I do this. Um, no matter what I do, you're going to get this. Maybe you can't. Can you see how that is spotted? That will show up in the weaving. Um, I'm waiting for my bird feeder to fly off the hook out there. Um, so I wanted a smooth gradation from side to side, and there's no way to get that if you have a gap um, like that. Eva, I'm not sure what you mean by coil. Um, yeah, I think the eggplant were, I did think some about color theory when I was choosing which way the colors went and um, the uh, complement of violet is of course um, yellow. So the yellow orange is gonna hopefully really offset the violet. It should be really, it should be really pretty. Um, yeah, so Audrey's talking more about the surface um, of the tapestries, and yes, I think tapestry is a fiber, and um, everything from super rough texture to uh, everything from super rough texture to um, no texture is fine. The important thing is that you understand what it is you want to make, and that you figure out how to choose materials and equipment and tools and techniques that are going to get you to what you want to express. So in my opinion, the important thing is what you want to express. How you do that, um, there's lots and lots of choices to make. And so, you know, there are teachers who have a particular way that they think things should be done and this is how you do it and, and that's fine. You learn their way of doing things. But um, if you want to express something that that teacher isn't, their methods aren't working for you, then you should learn other methods. So yes, sometimes surface texture is fantastic. Most of my work has almost zero surface texture. I use a really thin warp and I use a fuzzy yarn, the Harrisville Color Singles, this piece being a bit of a departure um, because that's what I like. And also that is how my teacher taught me. So there's questions for me there. Um, Cool. Okay, so, um, yeah, Eva, um, where can I get those coil, I think you said, um, but I don't know what you mean by that, so um, you might be talking about the bobbins. Uh, anyway, um, thank you all for coming and um, hanging out with me, and um, hopefully, I don't think we have any tornado warnings. We um, almost never get tornadoes in on the front range, but it has happened in the past, and I think we'll be fine. Um, but the wind is crazy. There's been some crazy weather in the United States just in the last few days. So hang in there, everybody. Please be safe. I had friends that were driving through um, Alabama and Kentucky when that storm was happening, so... Please be careful. Please don't drive if there's tornado warnings. Um, okay, cool. Nancy is talking about this particular yarn. It's British. Um, she uses it with Weaver's Bazaar. Sometimes it's really nice to mix.
Weaver's Bazaar is really slippery to mix it with a little, a yarn with a little more tooth. Or even the heavy Weaver's Bazaar has more tooth than the thinner stuff. So um, yeah, mixing those kind of yarns sounds like a good idea to me, Nancy. Um, I'll have to uh, Google that when we get off the call and see what it looks like. Yes. Um, happy holidays, everybody. If you celebrate anything this month, um, have a fantastic uh, whatever you do. And um, I will be taking a couple weeks basically off. So I will see you in January. And um, looking forward to um, seeing some family and reading some books and probably shouldn't drink any more eggnog than I've already had, but <laughs> um, I do like it. So yeah, have a wonderful um, holiday season and uh, cool. I can just see the comments on my computer, but it's just a little bit far away. So if I, um, yeah, look at my iPad, I can see a little bit better. Welcome everybody. I, I mean, goodbye everybody. <laughs> Have a really great time, and I will see you again um, the first week in January. And we'll see where I am with this piece. And if you, um, oh, I did want to say thank you to everybody. I mentioned donations last week, um, which this is a free program, and I try not to, I don't want to push um, the donations. But some of you were so generous, and I just, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all of your help um, supporting this program, and um, it really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it, so um, I'll be sending you a little something in the mail to say thank you. And, um, oh, I have gift certificates. I have a note of everything I wanted to say. I have a few gift certificates on my, um, if you need a last minute gift for somebody, a digital gift is great, and I have gift certificates to courses on my um, website, so. Grab one of those if you have someone who needs a little help with tapestry. Thank you all so much. I will see you in January. Have a wonderful time and be safe and stay healthy and eat some good cookies. Bye, everybody.